of the four that I did, I still keep one. And it's never going to be for sale. I bring it to almost every place I give presentations. And it's my statement. I can do anything I want from a, a log or a carving. But I choose to do the style I do because, first off, I don't do it for anybody else. I do it for me. And I like the challenge or I like the fun aspect of it. So I like putting in, you know, a little bit of humor here and there. So hopefully you'll like that too. But I brought the piece with me. That's it over here. Um, it, it's called Reclining Alicia. The model was Alicia Silverstone. Probably don't. She played Batgirl, you know, in the movies. Yeah. And she's a vegan. And she did a poster that said Body by Veg. And I saw this pose and I just said, I need to carve that. And it was right at the same time I was going into this funk. So that's the result. It's up here. You can see it. Um, but most of my stuff has a tendency to look more like the stuff on the left. Okay? Um, some of it's pretty stylized, which means you know what it is, but it's not exactly. Um, more recently, I've done a whole series of native um, game fish, and I did it right out of the Indiana DNR's brochure on how to identify game fish. Um, and the biologist in me, because I think most of you know I'm a marine biologist, okay? I taught at St. Francis for almost 30 years. I taught elsewhere for a while. Um, but I really had to make those so good that somebody, even without markings on the fish, they could come and say, oh, well, that's a bluegill and not a crappie and not a red ear or not a sunfish or whatever. And they are on the marsh. So if you want to come over and see, you could decide whether I was successful. But I think, I think I was. And then the whole series of fish that I've done um, from my normal realm of, of the marine biology from down in the Bahamas, where I did my research. Now, again, I, I want people to be able to walk up, even another marine biologist, and say, I can tell you what that is to species. And I even try to do that. I've got a, a piece up here, and there's one. I, I'll, I'll introduce you to a friend, new friends. But it, it's over at the Hampton right now that has coral on the bottom. Well, that coral, each one of them is a real coral. I mean, I can tell you exactly what the species is that you know it's patterned from, and that that's important to me now. Even though nobody else might know it, to them it can just be generic coral, and that's fine. But so it's kind of like I can if I need to or if I want to, but I don't always. Um, so, um, the, the question everybody asks, any subtractive artist, how do you know what to take off? I mean, if that's what's laying on the floor when you're done, how do you know what to do? And when I was in high school, I went to um, Mystic Seaport out in Connecticut, and there was a guy carving maiden heads, you know, the things that are in the front of ships uh, from the old style, and he was... And it must have influenced the heck out of me, because who knew at that time I was going to actually do this. And they asked him that, and you could tell he'd been asked this a gazillion times. But he very nicely and honestly looked up and he said, I see the piece that I'm working on, so I know what its size and shapes and dimensions are. I look at it a little bit so I know what the grain is and things like that. Then I close my eyes and I imagine what it is when it looks done. Then I open my eyes and take off everything that doesn't fit. Now that's a really simple, kind of lousy, it's, it's a truth, it's, it's the truth is, yes. It is the, the best explanation I can tell you about the process that I go through when I'm working. Um, I sometimes do work from images, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment, but a lot of times I might take two or three um, images from like Google Images or whatever and meld them. I just want to make sure that the proportionality is right. But you know, the poses are usually just here. And I wish I could tell you what the more of the process was, but I can't. Um, my shameless cross-referencing is the Decatur Sculpture Tour. I've got brochures. Uh, it's up all year long. It's been there every year for the last 13. And they change it every June with a big unveiling. It's pretty fun to come to if you ever get a chance. 
but I have three pieces in it this year. I'm the only artist that has three, um, but they are from the artists that are represented in the 28 or 29 pieces this year come from nine states and three countries. Um, this year, the jury, and this is the same one I was talking about that we're going to put the turtles in. Um, the this year, the the jury for those 28 or 29 pieces, and I can't remember because it shifts depending on um, their pedestals and stuff for year to year and sponsorships. But uh, the committee would explain to everybody that they only took about 25% of what was submitted. And almost everybody that does it is a full-time professional artist. So if you go, expect to see really good stuff, and you will. You will. And it's, it's, there's maps once you get up there also. Um, you know, the old-time uh, newspaper boxes, you know, put the dime in or whatever. You don't have to put any money in, but those have all been reconverted now to maps. And if you're kind of tech sophisticated, I'm not. Um, if you have somebody that's a nine-year-old with you, um, <laughs> they can point their phone at it, and they all have Q codes. I don't even know what that is. But um, <laughs> the Q codes, they had each of us record a two or three minute talk on about that piece while you're in front of it. Um, so that, you know, we tell you what kind it is, what the style, what the materials are, and uh, just a little bit about why we did it, you know, the inspiration behind it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's right. Um, when you start on a piece, mm -hmm. um, you obviously have a subject in mind. Yes, yes. Um, depending on, on the type of subject you're going to work on, do you go to a certain type of wood? I, 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 That's a great I, question. I, no, no. And I, I learned long ago, you know, in, in speech classes, they always tell you to say, well, that's a good question. I don't buy into that, but that is. <laughs> um, I, hate, I almost detest carving in softwoods, and yet the one I'm going to show you that I've been working on for the last week and a half is made out of poplar, which is a fairly soft wood. It's kind of a medium soft wood. I, I didn't really have a lot of fun with it, but I used it because not only did it have the right size piece sitting there, but also the subject is a snapping turtle, and they don't have shiny shells or whatever. So to have that little fuzzy aspect of it at the end was fine with me. Um, but normally I use hardwoods, and that's a rarity for carvers, even of mallet and gouge. Why? Because they're hard. Yeah. It's a lot more work. But I love how um, hardwoods take a gouge. And I'm working on a, a big chunk of walnut over there right now. And you know, you can see it's just, it takes a, it, it's like I had it finished every stroke I take. It's just beautiful, smooth, and you see that grain, and it's just gorgeous. Did that help? Yeah. Um, so these are some of the ones I've had in the past. Um, after about doing it eight or nine years, I asked them, would you possibly be willing to give me the entire window in front of a CPA firm that's one of their sponsors? It was 28 foot long, it's 12 feet high, and seven foot deep. And I made a, a, a life size what I see when I'm scuba diving, you know, or when I'm working snorkeling on the reef. I love the chest. I did, well, that was, I just threw that. I did not carve that. I think that was fun. They put it in there. <laughs> but, you know, and, I, and there's a lot of little, you know, funky things that you only could see if you were actually, I mean, like, we had fake coins, and then I threw in some real ones. Um, but there was also some pieces of garbage, because unfortunately, I do see that when I'm down there. Um, but, so this gives you the, the mannequin and baby. Um, actually, the, the lobster is the equivalent of a five pound lobster, a five pounder, which is pretty rare. And it's also over at the marsh right now. I didn't bring the big pieces because they're tough to schlep around, okay? Um, the biggest one, which I'll show you in a couple minutes when it started, was over a ton. Yeah, that, that, my car doesn't even like that. <laughs> um, but the, uh, I'm really happy to say the octopus, which I thought was just a lot of fun. Um, I, I bought a bunch of slats and made that box for it. And I put stickers on it that, you know, talk about fresh fish inside and all that kind of stuff. And the idea was that the octopus was, you know, they're smart, right? So he's going to figure out how to open it. And when I unveiled that in Decatur, 
I took a little crowbar and I just set it right there on top of it. <laughs> and I said, you know, when they unveiled it, because they literally cover them, they pull it and here's this crowbar. I go, Damn, those guys really are smart. <laughs> but right now it's in a suburb of Dallas, so I can explain a little bit about public art here in a moment. But once you've created a piece, that's a lot of work, okay? And that um, uh, octopus is all out of one piece of wood. And it started just as a big block. Uh, and there's probably over 200 hours of carving in it. And if you could turn it upside down, even though you can't see it on the piece, because they're attached by bolt, but if you could turn it upside down, every single tentacle has every single suction cup. That's what I do, okay? So, you know, um, but it's now in Garland, Texas for this year. So a suburb of, and I'm really happy with it, it decided to find a nice little home there. Yes, ma'am. So do you have some glue on that one? Uh, you know, I don't remember actually. I'm sure I do. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, injuries, your body and your mind kind of forget the bad ones. Yeah. Uh, so I figured you'd break a leg or two. Oh, yeah, you know, it's kind of like theatrical, right? Break a leg. All right, let's go to the next one. So those are some of my public pieces. These are some more. Um, and this is the part where I think, you know, I'd like to have, have a little bit of a whimsy. Um, this is last year's piece down here. It was a composite again, or an install is the kind of the vernacular, and it has lots of different pieces. I think there's actually I carved 14 mushrooms for it, and they're also over at the, the marsh right now. But it has notice the central figure is a guy standing on a stump. Well, if that has any kind of similarity to the Lorax, it's completely incidental. I mean, of course, he inspired me, but there's enough differences on it that I'm not going to get in trouble with the, the Seuss people for uh, uh, copyright infringement or anything. And I'm making another one of those now. Um, I've made probably 40 of them total because my former students at St. Francis in environmental science, you know, all wanted that for their graduation present. I'm sorry, Allie, you had to be a major. <laughs> so that's I, I ever since the first one that I had sitting in my office and the student says you know I want that and I, my response was you can't afford it <laughs> um, but I've been making them and then giving them to them as graduation so I, I vary a little bit because I get bored but for the most part it's the same sort of character uh, the one I'm working on right now that I started carving out on Marsh I'm going to make him barefoot on, in sandals so that's just something a little bit different. Um, the tortoise and the hare, um, it was displayed in Decatur in front of the library. They have a, a park they call Storybook Park. And uh, so I work with, once it's a submitted and accepted there, and again, I've been really lucky they've said they accepted something every year. I work with the uh, Kitty Lit um, librarian and she creates the summer around my piece, you know, the summer reading program for kids. So in this case, it was Fables, and they talked about Aesop's. I've had some others that you'll see in there. Um, that's a polar bear at the top, and they really do that sliding around on ice. The scientists aren't even sure why. I think it's just because it feels good. <laughs> but, you know, some people think it's to, to disguise their shadow from below. You know, so seals won't think when they come into open water and they come up to get a breath because they're mammals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you have more than one clamping device that you use oh, yeah. for the larger pieces? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I have a whole series, yeah. and that's why it's so much easier to work on things at home. Uh, and then these two over here are currently in my garage. They moved with us, but they've already been to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and they're being repaired as soon as I get a chance when the fall. You know, this kind of stuff ends up. Uh, I'll repair them because they, the weather is not kind to wood pieces no matter what you put on it. So I'll sand some of it down and put them back. But they've already been promised uh, for next year to a suburb of Denver. And, uh, you know, again, you know, it's hard to tell what inspires people. But, of course, am I influenced by Fantasia? Yeah. But, you know, I mean, how much of a brain does it take to to think it's funny 
that a big fat animal is going to be a ballerina, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 Disney can't lay claim to having all of those. So this is definitely my interpretation of it, and uh, it's definitely different. And is that okay? Yeah, it is. Next. And Ali, I want to warn you, I don't have that many slides, so you don't have to worry because we can go on forever. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a favorite wood, and do you have a wood that you hate? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> I hate pine because it splinters and it's got such pronounced grain. Um, I do a lot in walnut. But I'd say my favorite wood is sassafras. Oh. It's hard to get it up here in big enough form for me to use. But I have some friends that I made because they're bowl carvers. And I met them at a, well, I met them at 1812 in uh, Missoula. Oh. And uh, he goes, oh, yeah, I'm a forester down in Park County where all the covered bridges are. Mm -hmm. And he goes, we get rid of those as trash trees. Oh, God. And he goes, come down anytime you want with a you know, trailer or whatever. So I did. And I have a, a good size supply that is drying right now. You might be curious when I get all my wood, I don't buy. I don't buy any of it. Uh, although it has <coughs> value, but I get it from people's burn piles or, you know, things that people give me. And it's amazing, you know, when I do things like Johnny Appleseed, you know, that nice little quaint thing where 200,000 people or the closest yeah. friends come and band it. Yeah. Now, anyway, people go, oh, I, I've got this, uh, you want it? Sure. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm not going to come and get it. Here's my address. So when I lived in Huntington, I don't anymore. I moved up to Southern Michigan this summer uh, after 30 years. It, it would not be uncommon for us to come home from some event and find some wood. Sometimes with people's names on it, sometimes nothing. Just There's a pile. Uh, and I also have a a friend who has a tree service um, in Huntington, Mike's Tree Service. I'll give him a shameless plug. Um, Mike's a, a faculty, English faculty of all things at Huntington College. And um, if he finds something really weird, you know, he'll just drop it off too. Usually he'll text me and say, Did you know what I dropped off? Oh, it was you. <laughs> um, so last year um, was the ostrich. And uh, I hope that you might see it again. It was at Decatur last year. I've got it right now. It too needs to, to have just a little bit of, of refurbishing, but I've submitted it for Angola. So Angola only accepts four. So they're right there on the, the, the circle in Angola. So on each of the compass settings. Um, so, uh, oh, but if not there, it'll go somewhere. I'm really lucky there's actually people now contacting me saying, do you have anything? And uh, it's pretty neat. Um, the piece on the far left is what's currently at um, Decatur as an outdoor piece, so the gnome with the dog. And it's about four and a half feet high. Uh, it, it was a pretty good sized log. It is from the same source as all three of these plus the two ballet dancers. They're all from the same tree. Now, oddly enough, I planted that tree as a kid um, in my mom's backyard, mom and dad's backyard. They had a, a big backyard out by New Haven. And uh, they paid me a quarter to pull the volunteer walnut trees out of my grandmother's um, flower beds while they were putting a roof on, a new roof on her house. It was just to get me out of the way. And rather than pulling them, I dug them and convinced them to get the plant. Well, like 30 of them took. So we planted them too close to one another. So about 20 years ago, I conned a friend of mine from high school. I said, hey, Robin, my mom and dad used to feed you and pick you up with me from basketball practice. Come on out and do them a favor. And he did. And he tripped them and said, this one's got to go, this one's got to go. <clears throat> and uh, we saved some of the biggest, best wood. So that's kind of a weird thing. Who would have ever guessed, right? So, but the one that I was telling you about, this one in the middle was supposed to be all one piece of walnut. I got to the back of the head, was ready to start carving the hat, the top hat, and I hit charcoal, which means that the tree had actually been struck by lightning when it was <coughs> younger and regrow. It didn't kill it or anything, but I couldn't carve it. And I kept trying to figure out, okay, how can I do this? How can I do this? And finally, after like five hours of kind of, ah, I just went out with a chainsaw and went, Wah! and cut the bad part out, which forced me into doing the 
top hat up or another piece. But the original, the walrus itself, um, without the top hat, is about five and a half feet high, and it is it was over a thousand or over a ton, two thousand pounds when I started. And so I had to straddle it, laying on the ground, and I would roll it, shift towels to keep it from moving on me. And uh, my back and my butt said. We'll let you finish this. You ain't never doing another one like that. <laughs> so that is the biggest piece I will ever do for two reasons. I don't have any more logs that big, and I can't do it. But it's cool. And a lot of people think that it's a self-portrait of, of sorts. <laughs> it's actually from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Tweedledee Dee and Tweedledum recite a poem called The Walrus and the Carpenter. It's actually a very morbid poem where the walrus and the carpenter convince the oysters to come out of the water and follow them up the hill. When they get so far and they know that the oysters don't have enough energy to walk back, they turn and eat them. <laughs> the things we teach our kids, right? From classic literature. Excellent. Larry? Yeah? Have you had any conversations with Fox Island about taking any of the fallen trees and giving it new life? Um, I haven't because right now I'm not taking any new wood. I have more wood that we just moved to Michigan at not small of a cost than I can probably carve in the rest of my lifetime. So I just keep telling people thanks but no thanks. And they go, well, do you know another carver? No, I don't. <laughs> not that does what I do. And that's kind of why I guess I'm getting calls from all over the country now. Because people in the public art arena see each other's and they go, well, that's really different. Because they're, they're getting so much of the same. You know, bronzes and, and metal things that look like Sputnik or whatever. I don't know. Um, so every now and then you just kind of do something goofy. And my goofy thing was my wife collects gnomes. Oh, sure. And so during COVID, uh, shelter in place, uh, just to get them out of the house, because we had all three generations living there together during it, so we could help them out with the kids. And I'd go out to the studio and I, I so. I carved for Christmas a couple of gnomes for her. And my silly wife, who many of you know, um, put the blasted things on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> Every relative. Oh, one! I want uh, so I carved a bunch of them. I don't want to become the gnome guy, but I actually was having some fun. And a, a recent former student said, who plays saxophone said, did you, did you ever carve one of those guys playing the sax? And he had done some favors for me. He's now the environmental science teacher out at Wayne. And I said, sure, Nick, I'll do that. So I carved him one, but in order, I didn't want to carve the saxophone. That's way too time consuming. So I found one as a um, miniature, you know, dollhouse miniature, mm -hmm. and it came with a set. So, oh, fine. So here I had all these <laughs> instruments laying around. Uh, what the heck? So I ended up, for me, it just you know, it wasn't meant for anything. I, I made a whole orchestra. And it's up at, at Decatur right now, too. They're called the, the Fabulous <laughs> Nomads. <laughs> um, there's even a lead singer. There's even a conductor and you know, piano. But uh, I had a lot of fun with them. And I, you know, there is no artistic significance at all to those. But I love it when I, I'm up there. And when we did the unveiling, you know, it's like people were expecting high-end art. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> but I love it when people come up and smile. And little kids point, you know, hey, I play that instrument. So it's fine. But that's them. Next. Um, so uh, the owl was also one that was up there. It was across. Um, it's actually from a photo that Gene Stratton Porter did. Uh, she's from Adams County, which is where Decatur is. So good tie-in. And I also did an artist in residency, both at the Geneva um, Gene Stratton Porter home, and I also did one up at Rome City, um, Lake Sylvan. Um, had a great time up there. It's cool. Um, the fish that I was telling you about, those are the ones up on the right. Uh, an otter. I almost had the otter to come back this time with it for this program. but. My brother-in-law will part with it even for a little bit. It's above his mantle. It's a full-size otter. It's really oh, cool. Wow. And it, it's eating a, a fish with a big bite out of it. But he looks like he just you know, got caught with his hand in a cookie jar. How did you select the piece of wood that you did that? In that case, I went out. I knew I wanted to do an otter. 
and I had all of these branches from that walnut tree, uh -huh. and I found two, one that had these two uh, branches coming off of a main trunk, and I, I just kind of immediately saw them as, as legs, uh -huh. and then I went from there. Um, beautiful. Thank you. The one in the middle is probably the piece right now that I am the most proud of, period. Oh, cool. um, during COVID also, I decided I wanted to carve herons. I never carved birds very much. I, I have a couple of birds, but not much. Um, and so this person that's off on the lower right uh, is a former student of mine, and he's the one that got me doing uh, public art. Greg Mendez is the one who's really responsible for the entire origin of the Decatur Sculpture Tour. He's a full-time professional artist, as is his brother, who uh, uh, interned, or if you want to call him, apprenticed under him, as is his wife, who is a fiber artist, and they're not starving. And Greg has pieces all over the world. I, the Fort Wayne did the Bill Blass celebration last year. If you saw any of the sculptures, those were Greg's. I mean, he's incredible. And we have been talking to each other for 15 years about, wouldn't it be cool if we could do something together? So, you know, while we're in COVID, you know, shelter in place, I texted him and said, I'm going to do some errands. And, but would you possibly, I don't want to just use rebar, you know, for the legs. Would you possibly consent to doing something? And he said, yeah, this could be the thing that we collaborate on. And I said, wow, yeah, we could. So I carved him. I took him to him two weeks before the install. Um, he knew they were coming, and he'd been working on some ideas. But Greg is an ace procrastinator, and he wouldn't even mind if I said that. Um, he says he does his best work under pressure. At any rate, I took him there two weeks before, and on the day before install, I went over to put the final polish, you know, wax coating and stuff like that. I had never seen what he was going to do. I said, Greg, I trust you. And he goes, well, I've been collecting all these scrap pieces when I make other things, like the Bill Blast stuff. And there are pieces from them. Um, I, I'm going to make a nest for them. And he said, I'm going to mount this all on a big slab of wood that I have. Well, he started, and he was welding, and he burned the crap out of the wood. <laughs> I mean, literally, it started a fire. And he goes, oh, that's not good. So he found these pieces of limestone laying around his shop. Um, and he literally kind of stole them from his mom and dad. He was houses. But that's what it ended up. Uh, they're at Decatur. I hope you get a chance to see them. But they won Best of Show. I've never collaborated with anybody before. And it just took, you know, recognizing that you had to have more talent than me.